so in Blender 4.5, we're getting a new experimental feature, which you can enable in your preferences called Bundle and Closure Nodes. There's a great article about these on the Blender website, and I've sort of recreated the demo here. But the demo isn't fully complete, but the concept of it is at least there. And I think it's going to change the way we interact with complex systems inside of GeoNodes, make it a lot more user friendly, and really just change the way data can flow around inside of the node tree. So um, you'll notice, first of all, that we have this new data type called closure. And I'm going to explain exactly what that is. But essentially what it allows us to do, if I drop down a closure uh, zone, it essentially allows us to create a set of nodes or operations that are run at a later date. So this works closely with the evaluate closure node. And basically what happens in here is, let's say I want to move something. So I'm going to use a set position. I'm going to pipe in geometry input into this closure input here and output geometry here. Now you'll notice this zone is kind of unique in that these inputs and outputs actually aren't used like outside of this context. So we just output a closure and nothing is ever input into this zone, um, which is kind of interesting. So where do these input and outputs come from? They come from this evaluate closure node. So if I plug in the closure into here, I can now create this geometry input and output. I'll just create it like so in the node panel. And now if I input, say, the group input into this geometry, it's going to run uh, this set of nodes as this node, basically. So anything that happens inside of here will happen in here. And you can think of the inputs and outputs as if this was a node group. And this is like the inside of the node group. It's a kind of a nice way of thinking about that. So now this set position will be run. Even though we're running this evaluate closure node, it's looking back into this zone, taking this input from here into this zone. So that's kind of interesting. And obviously there's no reason that you would ever do this for such a simple case, because it's exactly the same as just having a set position uh, right in there doing the exact same thing. But it's very useful for more complex cases, particularly with simulation zones. So for example, um, I've set up a simple example here based on the Blender article that were well, the future plans for sort of built-in particle solvers and stuff inside of geometry nodes. And the idea is to have it very modular so that you have various force node groups and say emission groups and stuff like that, that you can all combine into this one particle solver and it will figure it all out. So right now I have the force of gravity plugged in. And if I go into this, you can see that what I've done is just make a closure that takes in geometry, which is our particles in this case, and delta time, which is very interesting because it's very important to be able to have access to something like delta time for complex physics. Um, but previously, the only way you'd be able to get this is from the simulation zone itself. So you would have to do all your forces and scaling and stuff inside this pink zone. There's no way to pipe out this delta time. You can see it destroys the zone. It's sort of stuck. Um, so you're used to be a bit stuck in that you had to do all your physics inside this zone. But now um, you can actually read it in from before the simulation zone even happens, because technically none of this is getting evaluated until we use the evaluate closure zone, which is inside the simulation zone. So this is technically not ever leaving. So we can just input delta time as our evaluate uh, closure node and use that to create our forces. and we could replace this force with say this repulsion force instead of gravity or combine the two. And there's currently no easy way to combine them though. I think that's a new feature that's on the way, this different socket type that's gonna allow us to have multiple things be able to combine into one, sort of like how the join geometry works, but just with um, closures or bundles instead, which will be very cool to see. But inside of this closure zone, everything happens exactly as normal. It's exactly the same as if you had these nodes just placed inside of this chain. So we can still use position fields and indexes and all that good stuff. The only limitation right now is that we can't input fields into the closures, which I believe is on the roadmap. And this is still an experimental feature in an alpha build. So there's still surely going to be a lot of changes that come to this. But overall, this is a very cool concept, I think. And let's talk about bundles next, because we have a new set of nodes called combine and separate bundle. And this um, is a very useful feature just for organization as well as anything else. So we have this combine bundle and separate bundle, uh, these two new utility nodes. And what these allow us to do is say input any number of 
um, stuff into this first input. So let's say I input this grid and I want to input a cone as part of this bundle as well. And maybe I want to input an integer as well. Just some important bit of information that I want to read later on. Um, right now you can't input fields into these either, I don't think. But yeah, basically all of that stuff now gets combined into this one single uh, socket. So you could transfer all this stuff across in this one type of socket and read it out this end. Again, similar to the, how the closure node works, you have to create the outputs with the exact same names as the inputs here. So I'd have to call this mesh if I want to be able to see the grid. And uh, you'll see I'll get an error saying that it can't find geometry.001 because this is called mesh.001. So if I want to view the cone, I'll have to call that the same thing, but I don't necessarily have to view, have the cone output here. I could just read the grid if that's all I cared about in this point in the tree. And then I could say, read another part of the bundle um, like the integer at a different point. But yeah, um, you can transfer, you know, various data types in here. And the cool thing about this is when combined with closures, it allows for some more intelligent behavior of uh, say the particle solver. So for example, you could combine the, uh, you could bundle up the forces with an identifier that tells you exactly what um, that bundle, uh, that closure is. So if I input a closure, uh, into a combined bundle, I could say input a string along with it that tells it, hey, this is a force. And then the particle solver could separate this bundle, look for the string, and then say, if this is a force, evaluate it at this point. If it isn't a force, evaluate it at this point. So that's kind of a cool way of combining these two things. And I think that's the plan for the particle solver in the future. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this. Um, it's giving us a lot more options of how data flows around inside of Geonodes now. So I'm very excited for 4.5 and the potential for these new physics-based nodes. This is extremely useful for stuff like constraints. And I think it's making Blender closer and closer to Houdini um, with every Geometry Nodes update here. So yeah, I'm really excited to see where this leads. But that's going to be it for now. And I'll see you in the next one.